Okay, I think we're ready. So thank you very much for joining us. My name's Ian Bennett from Audience Survey, and I'm joined this morning by Ian Usher from CADCOR. Ian, Ian Usher will be taking us through uh, route planning for emergency services, but just a little bit of, of, of housekeeping and a few things to mention beforehand. Uh, if there are any problems, please do put them in the chat window and we'll try and address them uh, with sound quality or anything, please let us know. If you've got any questions, please keep them to the end. There'll be an opportunity to ask questions. We'll try and answer as many as we can today at the end. If you've got support questions, please don't put them into the chat because it is a lot of those that tend to be quite individual and it distracts from the general discussion. So I'd appreciate if you could just save those up and, and then go back to your uh, account manager uh, or your relationship manager or survey, whatever is appropriate. So this webinar follows on from the previous webinars we've done around highways. Hopefully you all know about OS Master Highways. I'm not going to go into any detail this morning as we've done this before, but if you do have questions about highways, we're quite happy to pick up on those. So I'm going to hand straight over to Ian, who's going to talk about CADCOR and how they support emergency services in the use of route planning. Thank you very much, Ian. Thank you. Okay, um, so um, this morning, what we're going to do is we're going to look at route planning for emergency services. So um, what we will do is we've got a really short presentation, uh, and then as always, we've got a we've got a demonstration of the different things that we're going to do, and we'll have a look at these um, during the the presentation slides as well. So If I can move on, big up. So, uh, so very briefly, so um, we've supported um, Ordnance Survey products for over 20 years. And as part of the demonstration today, we're going to show you how easy it is to add the OS Master Map Highways Network into the CADCOR SIS9 desktop application. Uh, and route tools are offered as a standard within SIS desktop at no extra costs to customers. And these can be downloaded from the, from the customer portal for existing um, users of the application. So what we're going to do is we are going to show um, how easy it is to load in the Ordnance Survey Master Map Highways Network. Um, and then what we've got are a couple of sector examples. So we're going to um, look at police analysts who can use multi-point routing. Uh, we're going to look at ambulance and NHS trusts to look at isochrones. And then we're going to look at fire and rescue services. We're going to look at risk modeling and root cost analysis. Um, the important thing to remember is that all this type of um, analysis that we're doing can be cross-sector as well. So just because I'm doing it for the police doesn't mean that it can't be used for the ambulance and the fire service. Um, it's just these examples that we thought of uh, when we're thinking about doing this demonstration. So I believe that we've got a poll question. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to flash that up now. And... Select it. Okay, and everybody should be able to see that. Yeah, so the question is Does your software supplier support Ordnance Survey Highways data? So if you just give us a, um, a very quick yes or no, I'll wait a couple of seconds and then we'll uh, move on. Just give it another five seconds. Okay, so that's that's good. It's good to see that uh, a lot of suppliers are um, supporting the Ordnance Survey uh, Highway status. That's really good. So um, what I'm going to do now is, um, based on what we've just talked about, we're now going to uh, head over to the uh, demonstration. So I'm going to close my uh, PowerPoint down. Um, so what you'll see, um, hopefully, in front of you is the SIS desktop application. So as Ian said at the start, if we um, if I start talking and things don't look right, if somebody could just say something, uh, that would be useful. But hopefully, we should be able to sell through this quite quite easily. Um, so this is the this is the SIS9 desktop application, and what we're going to do first is we're going to show you how easy it is to load in the Ordnance Survey uh, Master Map Highways Network. So uh, what I've got uh, available to me, if I just go to my uh, Highways folder is we have um, the data that we're going to load in today is for our Stevenage area, 
And what we've got is we've got the GZ file formats, that are the raw native file formats that the Ormond Server Highways Network data comes in. And what we can do, it's really easy to add that data into the Sys9 desktop application. So if we go into add overlay, um, I can see that there's an option for Ormond Survey data on the left hand side from our overlay types. And then here we can see that we've got our OS master map highways network. So what I can do is click next. The system will uh, go to the relevant folder that we've loaded in previously. So as you can see, I've loaded in our Stevenage data previously, so that's where it's gone. And what I can do is click finish. And what you'll see at the bottom is that it's given us a count uh, while it's loading the data in of all that data that's being loaded. And once it's loaded, it will create a, a topological network that allows us to route on that data straight away. So if I now zoom in, what you'll see is that we've got all of our roads on the map and they're all um, styled appropriately. So if I went to filter, um, you can see we've got the links and the nodes and the roads. So we might be able to say turn our A roads or B roads off and we can see that uh, data being turned off as we see fit. Um, and the data is straight, uh, straight away accessible within the Sys9 desktop application. Um, and to show that we can now uh, route on it, the simplest thing that we could do at this point is we could say that we want to create, um, just me simply measure a route. So if I go into our applications, uh, what you'll see is we've got routing tools that are available to us. And one of those routing tools is simply to measure a route. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to say that we want to use our highway speed network um, as a measurement option. And I'm also going to say that I want to create a line stream. So that when I click OK, the system allows me to uh, put a point on the map and it allows me to put a point where I want to finish and what will happen is um, the system will go away based on the, um, uh, set, the default settings that you get with the OS master map highways network such as motorways are 70, A roads are 60 etc. It says it's going to take 3 minutes and 31 seconds to get from point A to point B and then when we turn our highways network off you'll also see the route that it uh, took for that particular measurement. So straight away, you've loaded the data in and you're able to create um, uh, measurements um, straight from that uh, data that we've loaded in uh, that is uh, as default as the GZ file format. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the different um, sector examples that we've got available. So one of the first ones is we're going to look at our um, police data. So uh, in this example, what we've done is we've said that um, we might have um, incidents where a vehicle has been stolen and we can see where those vehicles have been recovered. So we might want to see if there's a pattern in how these vehicles have um, been stolen and recovered using the, the OS hybrid network. So um, there's a common link between them, which obviously is the number plate registration. So you'll see on the vehicle we've got in front of us, it's been stolen from a, um, a location and we've got a number plate of HG58UBY. And then if we hover over the points on the map, one of those other points will also have the same number plate. So there's a, there's a common link between the two. So what we're going to do is we're going to rush, run a match point routing analysis. So um, in our routing tools, you can go to points and you'll see that we can run a match point. So again, it's wizard driven, so it remembers the last settings that you applied. So as you can see, I've done this before. Uh, but what we're going to say is we want to run from our vehicle stolen using the attribute, which is the number plate. And we want to go to the vehicles recovered using our number plates, the common attribute between, between the two. And then uh, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to say that measurement option is our highway speeds. And when I click OK, the system goes away and tells me that there's six matches that have been found, which is great. Do I want to proceed? I can click yes. And what it will do is it will now create those six routes for those individual uh, vehicles. So again, if I turn my OS highway data off now, what you'll see is that we can now see where those vehicles have travelled. Uh, to get to those particular areas. At this point, what we could do is we might have, um, in this example, we've got speed cameras that identify, um, that have been identified within that, that particular area. Um, if we click on those um, CCTV cameras, we might have properties on that allow us to see latest images that have been picked up. Um, unfortunately, none of these um, CCTV cameras, because I've already checked, uh, have been picked up with any of the registrations that have driven through them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that um, our speed cameras are going to work as a no-go area. So I'm going to select my speed cameras and I'm going to go into settings. And what we can do is we can specify a no-go area. So we can say 
we know that these port, these uh, vehicles have not been stolen and recovered using the same network. Um, maybe try and find another way of, of getting from point A to point B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that uh, these are our speed camera uh, blocks, let's say. If I can spell. Uh, I'm going to create that filter because I've selected that data. And then I'm going to also going to apply that to the network. So that when we click close, if I turn this data off and turn our highways data back on, what we're going to do is exactly the same. So we're going to create our match points again, using exactly the same from and twos, uh, using exactly the same measurement option. But what you'll see now is that there's no go area speed camera clocks is being applied. So when I click OK, uh, it tells me the six matches that have been found, which is great. And uh, what it will do is it'll take a little bit longer because now it's having to work out alternative routes based on the fact that those speed cameras weren't um, driven over in the first analysis. So you see it's creating those routes in front of us. And then what we'll be able to do is look and see if there's any patterns in that data again when it becomes available to us um, on the mapping screen. So we're halfway through. She's got a couple more. And then, as you can see, it's created the, the routes on the map, which is great. Um, and what I can now do is we can see that there's a different route that uh, some of the vehicles might have taken. So this allows us to maybe turn on maybe CCTV cameras that we might have available. Um, I can see that one of the routes was using um, the vehicle HJ58UBY. And then if I were to click on my speed camera, I can see that there's, a, there's an image that's been picked up. And there we go, we've got the vehicle in front of us. That, that's a very broad example of it being used, and I'm sure there's a lot more analysis that goes into it, but it's got the options of the routing tools can be used in um, saying that maybe this, this route has been cancelled out, or we definitely know that this vehicle has not gone down this area, find alternative routes and see if there's anything that you can identify within that particular area. Okay, so that's our that's our police data. Uh, so that's using our kind of our multi-point uh, routing. Um, what we can also do is um, we can also produce um, isochromes. So these are um, these are areas that allow us to see how far we can drive from a particular area. So in this in this really basic example, what we're going to say is we've got our GP site. Um, I'm going to select my GP site, and I'm going to say that we want to create an isochrome using the routing tools. And what we can do is we can set. Actually, if I just turn my no go areas off because I don't want them on anymore, I'll just clear that off. Um, I can say that I want to set an isochrome, and what we can do is we can identify kind of our travel limits. So I'm going to say that uh, we want to see maybe how far we can get from a particular site within two, four, and six minutes. And I'm also going to say that I want to apply a colour theme, we're going to use our highway speed data. And when we click OK, what you'll see is the system starts creating the isochrome. And when it's finished, it will style the data accordingly as well. So once it's done, we see it in front of us and we can see exactly where we can get to within that two, four and six minute drive time distance that we've just specified, which is which is brilliant. And again, that's that's using the, the settings that uh, apply by default, which is the motorways are 70 and the A roads are 60, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, what we uh, what both Cradcorp and on the survey are also reselling is the um, base map average speed data. Um, and what we can do is we can um, I've already done this, uh, but we can attach this to our highways um, data so that it gives a more realistic approach of how that isochrome could be um, viewed. So if we just have a look at our highway data, what you'll see is that for um, peak time AM between 07 and 09, Monday to Friday, instead of it being uh, maybe, a, I think that's probably a 70 mile an hour road, um, that's being classed as a 64.09 miles per hour. So it's giving the average speed data across the, the whole of the UK for all the highways data um, available. So what we could do is we could use this to create a more realistic isochrome of that particular um, site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my uh, GP again. Uh, I'm going to go into settings. And this time I'm going to say that 
Um, we've already created this, but this time we're going to specify that we're going to use a, our own expression, which is which is using the attributes from the um, PKM uh, Monday to Friday um, attribute on the highways data. So that when I click into our isochromes, we're going to say we want to run exactly the same um, travel limits, exactly the same distance. Um, we're going to apply the colour theme, but I'm going to use my own expression. So that when we click OK, you'll see it creates us the isochrome. And compared to the previous one, that is a lot smaller because it's more realistic data. It's providing um, a realistic um, uh, travel time from a particular site. And of course, it doesn't have to be the average speed data. It could be the AVLS data that you're getting off your fire appliances or your police appliances. Um, that can be um, snapped to the OS highways data. But this is um, either way, this is just providing a more realistic um, approach to whether or not um, how far you can get from a particular um, site that you might see in front of you. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to use this in this example. So our NHS um, sites have a, a contractual boundary uh, and number of patients, and they also have a drive time distance boundary to see how many customers, how many customers, how many patients they have within a particular area. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to select our um, GP sites. I'm going to say that I want to create an isochrome and I'm only going to specify one travel limit because that's all I'm interested in. So I'm interested in a six minute drive time where I'm going to fill the isochromes. I'm going to colour the data up once I've got it because we're going to show how easy it is to print that a data after. And I'm going to leave my own expression in there as well. So when I click OK, the system will create the isochromes and we'll see that created in front of us. And at the minute, it's, uh, we've got a, a brown colour to what we can see. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to specify that actually I don't want that uh, brown colour that's set by default. I'm going to say that we want this to be blank and so that we can see it when we print the data out. I'm going to say that we've got a red um, outline and I'm also going to create it as a dash. So that when I click OK, we'll see the data in front of us. So we've now got the GP site with the contractual boundary area, which is in green, the patients that are visiting that GP site, and we've also got the drive time distance um, configuration. So what we what we might want to do now is we might want to print this data with all the um, attribute data in front of us um, on the map. So uh, because I've used more than one um, on this example, you can see we've got all the GP sites that are available. So what we can do is we've got a book plotter application that allows us to print multiple different sites at the same time in one hit. So um, what I'm going to say is that I want to use our book plotter. Um, we're going to say that we want a page per item, and this page per item is going to be our GP site. So when I click next, we can set that as our GP site. And then what we can do is we've got a print template set up, uh, which is our NHS outer area boundaries. We've got a scale for the points. And then what we can do is we can choose how we want this output to be saved. So I'm going to save this as a PDF and I'm going to merge these into a single plot. And I'm also going to save them as JPEG so we can see the data in front of us in a, a JPEG format so that they can be shared. And then when I click next, it tells me there's three sheets that are going to be created, which is great because we've only got three GP. In this example, we've only got three GP sites. But what it will do is it will create a print template for each of those sites and it will automatically, um, I've set this up, so it automatically gives a count of the number of patients that are uh, visiting that GP, how many are within the contractual boundary and then how many are also within the drive time boundary. So it gives you all the information um, that's needed within the uh, PDF um, or the JPEG file um, that uh, you have specified when you go through the wizard. So we're just waiting for the Last one to save it. Once it's saved, we'll be able to go and we go onto our desktop. I've saved these in a book plotter file. We've got a PDF that's specified. So we asked for all these to be um, amalgamated into one. Um, so we should have three pages, which is great. So we've got three pages available to us. And then if we just have a, a little look, what you can see is that book plotter application um, has displayed the contractual boundary and the drive time boundary along with all the patients. It tells us the population total that are visiting that GP site, but then what it also does is it's providing a calculation to show how many uh, patients are within the contractual boundary, which is green, and then how many are also with the, within the drive time boundary that we've literally just created in front of us. So that's a, that's a nice little output for each one. Um, 
for in one PDF. And then if I just look at our um, book plotter, we ask for individual JPEGs as well. So we now we've also got our JPEGs that can be sent on to, to other users with exactly the same information in front of us. It's just a really quick and easy way of getting those isochromes that you've created relating to a particular NHS site uh, straight away into a JPEG or a PDF and they can be shared with other people as well. Okay. And then, so the very last um, case study that we were looking at was our um, fire services. So, um, so our highways data doesn't have to be um, data that you can route on. So um, the, the way that fire services will use the data is they might use it for uh, risk modelling. So they might want to know how many um, road traffic accidents have happened on a particular stretch of road so they can identify that you know uh, this road is particularly of some concern. Um, so it doesn't it doesn't have to be routing that you use the highways data for. So what we can do um, in this example, we've got um, kind of a road traffic accident um, around the Stevenage area, and uh, using Risk Modeler, which allows us to instantly calculate um, this kind of analysis, we can say that we want to create a link-related um, uh, risk. So again, because it's wizard-driven, what we can do is we can specify. Um, our network type. So we're going to say we're using the Hertfordshire OS Highways network to start with. It's going to create a results column, which is great. Um, the data that we want to snap to the network will be our road traffic accidents, and we can specify a maximum distance. What we can also do, which is really useful, is we can create a density report. So we can say per mile, we might want to know how many accidents have happened on motorways or A roads or B roads. Um, so I'm going to say we want to create a density report as part of this analysis. And what will happen now is um, it's initialising those links. So it's basically snapping all of those road traffic accidents to the nearest um, toid that it can find and relating that back to the master map highways network. So once it gathers all of that data, what you'll be able to see in one second is that we get a density report. So we can see that, uh, for example, we Use our highway motorway as an example, uh, but we can see that the motorway, the total length of motorway is 155 metres, of which has been 24 incidents on um, the stretches of the motorway, which equates to 0.15 per mile. So you can break that down further with subcategories if you want to. And what we can also do is export that data out as a, as a CSV file to analyse further in Excel. Um, I'm going to leave that as it is. Uh, what we can also do is we can also colour the highways data too. So um, what it's done is it looked, it's looked at all the highways data, um, it's counted how many uh, road traffic accidents are on each part of the network, and it gives us numbers. If I say I want to ignore zero values, because I'm not interested in anything that doesn't contain anything, what you'll see is that anything that's got one or two incidents snapped in it will give a green, anything um, higher than um, three will give it a red, and what we can do is click finish. And what you'll see is that now we've got our um, highway data has been themed really nicely so we can see where the majority of our road accidents have been um, on that particular that particular highways network data. And just because um, what we can all do is because the, uh, the way the mass map work, uh, the way the highways network works, uh, we can see that those toys also appear when we when we zoom in and zoom out so we can start to identify um, smaller uh, road segments that might have accidents on them as well. Okay, so that's one example of just showing that it doesn't have to be about routing, it can be um, using the highways network for um, other types of analysis. Um, but then what we're going to do is we're also going to create a, a root cost analysis as well. So this is our last um, example. So I'm just going to turn my theme off from my highways and my road traffic accidents. And what I'm going to say is that we've got a, we've got a location of all of our um, fire stations within our Stevenage area. And um, the fire services create a, a root cost analysis to identify risk for particular areas. So in this example, we're choosing um, grids. Uh, what you could do is you, you could specify uh, ward boundaries or um, output areas, anything that your organisation currently thinks or classes um, uh, boundary data as risk uh, boundary data. Um, and what we can do is we, the, the root cost will simply give a measurement as to how quick an appliance will get from uh, where they are currently based to the grid item that we've got available using the OS Highways network. So again, if we go into risk modeler, I'm going to go into root cost. Uh, again, it's wizard driven, so we get asked the questions as we go through. So we specify the geographical units, so we specify in a grid, and the identifier is going to be our 
um, OS references get supplied to each grid square, uh, and there's a root cost column that's going to be created. Uh, and then we have to specify where we want to route from. So I'm routing from our fire station using the station name. Uh, because um, not, not all journeys are the same. So um, for example, the fire service will have um, a time to mobilize. Some of the appliances might be retained, in which case it might take them a little bit longer than a, than a, um, a whole time station to get out. Um, so what you can do is you can specify journey penalties. So we've got a time to mobilize. And then likewise with the, with the grids or the output areas is that you know that that output area might be um, fully rural. So it might take a five minute walk to get into the center of the output area. So you could specify a time uh, to get to that incident as well. So you're just making it a little bit more realistic. And then what we can do is we're going to use our highway speed uh, as our routing expression. Again, we could export this out as a CSV file. So it will give a measurement for each fire station going to each grid square. Um, I'm going to click next and then what it does is it will create all of the uh, multi-route calculations for each of the risks. So it's traveling from each fire station to each grid square and then it's giving um, the calculation at the end which will allow us to theme the data. So um, in a second what it will do is it will come up with the wizard that tells us this is the root cost. So we, again we've specified a red and green situation. Uh, we're going to leave it as that. Again, I'm just going to ignore zero values, although there should be no zero values in the fit. Uh, and then what I can do is click finish. And what you'll see now is, again, using the highways network, we've created a risk for that particular um, Stevenage area. And as you can see, it's identified two squares that are at risk um, based on where the appliances are um, located currently. And then we've got maybe six, I think there is, um, that are of medium risk as well. And I know anybody that and knows the Stevenage area, you'll know that these squares down the left hand side, uh, you will have to go out of your way to come back down. So that's that's really good and allows you to see kind of the risk that's being applied to that to, to that root cost information available. Okay, so that's kind of our last uh, demonstration example. So it's it's important to um, just reiterate what we said at the start, which was that all of these types of analysis can be um, used cross sector. So you can use the fire service example that we've just seen within the police and the police within the NHS. Um, so all, all the tools are available to you. Uh, and the last thing that I want to um, just um, show in regards to the kind of the presentation side of things is that the registration for the um, CADCORP Emergency Services Conference is now available from the CADCORP uh, website or the registration link on this on this page. Um, there's going to be presentations from both UK emergency services and technical providers and uh, yeah, the registration, if you are interested, is on this page, or you can visit the CADCOP uh, website and register from there. Um, and that is, I hope that's been useful to people. Uh, and that is all from me. And at this point, I think we're willing to take any questions that people might have. 